I noticed a change and held my breath. In front of me was a display that had been turned on. Until just now, I was video chatting with my mother-in-law who lives far away from my son. Thank you, as always. Please show me my grandchild's face again soon. The call, which was supposed to end with a pleasant goodbye, did not discontinue my mother-in-law's face from remaining on the screen. She must have made a mistake with the operation. I couldn't help but give in to my um, curiosity and wondered what my moth usually does. Taking advantage of her not noticing watched the screen that remained core for a while. Then suddenly, a figure appeared before my mother-in-law. Huh? She lives alone, doesn't she? As soon as the identity of the figure clearly shone on the screen, my heart began to beat. Wait, is that? Without delay, I screamed. Behind you? What? My name is Cindy a 36-year-old moth, former housewife. The reason former is attached is Sin got divorced from my husband. To put it bluntly, my ex-husband, doctor, complete jerk. Marrying him was nothing but a mistake of youth. Were there any happy times during your years of marriage? Even if there were, they were not W. I was happy when our son was born, but I wasn't even there for his birth. I was drinking at a bar. The real problem wasn't alcohol, though he was also addicted to gambling. He had no interest in our child's G, would find opportunities to gamble. He only paid attention to our son when he was big and felt good about himself. If he had worked, even though he was like that, things might have been ski better. But the money Drew used for his drinking and gambling was all earned by himself. No matter how angry I got, he would out of my wallet and go out. When he couldn't find any money, he would just drink himself to death at home. Of course, I thought about divorcing him many times, but I couldn't. If it were just me, I might have started my life over, but it's different with a child. My parents have already passed away. I don't even have money to hire a lawyer. There is nowhere to turn to, so, I held back my tears and left my child at the kindergarten, working during the day and doing work at home at night, sacrificing my sleep time. I felt like I was reaching my limit every day, living such a shitty life. But there was someone who saved me. It was my husband's mother, my mother-in-law. One day, Drew said the worst thing. Hey, where's the money? What are you talking about? I said, the money? Give it to me. I kind of screwed up, you know? Got a girl pregnant, so I need to get an abortion. Can you give me the money? What on earth is he thinking? He has no sincerity towards me, towards women, or towards children. I talk back to my husband. I don't have any money. Why do I have to clean up after you infidelity? And abortion? What do you think you... Do you have no sense of responsibility or guilt? No matter how eagerly I respond, there's no way that Drew will be affected by it. He starts searching through my bag and drawers without even listening to me. I've made up my mind that I can't sown him anymore. But who can I turn to? Then, I suddenly remembered someone mother. Although our relationship is quite strained due to Drew's bat behavior, we still exchange pleasantries when we meet in public EI. I sent her a letter when our son was born. She's probably the only person I care about, although there is a possibility she could have a terrible personality like R. But I can't afford to make my life any more negative with a faint hope that there might be a chance to turn things around. I even called my mother-in-law and told her what had happened. She let out a deep sigh. So he never changed. Then she kept silence for a while. To be honest, she didn't reply to my text when my son was born. So I kind of assumed that my mother-in-law didn't want anything to do with Drew or us. When I almost gave up, she started tap. Well, it's true that I don't want anything to do with that stupid son of mine, but I still want to do something for your grandfather. 
without even noticing it, I was cry. At that moment, I couldn't remember actually when was the last time I had someone on my side. Anyway, I am I'll come over tomorrow, so home until I come. Saying that, my mother-in-law hung up the phone. What is her plan exactly? I couldn't deny my anxiety, but I managed to keep Drew home that day. If you stay home today, I'll think about the money for the abortion. Of course, I was disgusted to even stuff like that, but I had to do, son. Then, as she said she would, my moth came at noon. As soon as Drew saw her mother, he me and said, Why the heck is this bitch here? You know why, don't you? My mother-in-law looked at Drew with disdainful eyes. Then she took out of her bag a brown envelope, a divorce decree, mm, and a piece of paper with some kind of text on it. In this envelope, you will find documents that pertain to your inheritance. It pains me to my core to give you my inheritance since you didn't even show up for your father's funeral, but I'm giving this money. So divorce her right now and promise me, never show yourself again, never invade yourself with your son, never ask for anything. Promise me these three things. This is a written promise that summarizes, after signing it, you can go anywhere you want, do anything you want. I had no idea what my mother-in-law was up to, but the idea of giving away her husband's inheritance to him seemed like a good way to stop her. But she looked at me and shook her. Drew's mood had changed instantly. Dang, really? He filled out the pledge form, Inkle divorce application, and was happy. And without even reading the pledge up. All right, Cindy, now you're free from your job. I'm also happy to cut ties with a WC who can't even earn money to propel himself. Well, take care of yourself and the... Saying so, Drew left the house looking happy. It hadn't even been 20 minutes since my mother-in-law arrived. I had to thank and apologize to my mother-in-law anyway. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry. I never meant to take your money, let alone your father's inheritance. I will definitely pay you back. Then my mother-in-law turned to me and shook her head, gesturing me away. Didn't I tell you? I just did my par grandchild. Honestly, if it were just me, I would have helped. Besides, you are also at fault for being deceived by scum like Drew. And since he won't listen to words, money, and the law matter for that, so don't worry about it. Saying that my mother-in-law approved of me? She spoke. Hello, Elliot. Then my mother-in-law played with her grandson for a while. Apparently, she had been living alone since her husband died. Since Drew was the only one she had naturally ended up like that. After talking for about an hour, my mother-in-law stood up and began to leave, speaking to me. Well, I'm going to go now. You broke Drew, so we won't meet again, but... From now on, take back the time you be happy. I was surprised by my mother-in-law's sudden departure and tried to stop her. Wait, I haven't even thanked you yet, and I do know what to do about her besides breaking. Up with Drew? Do I have to break ties with you? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by edit here. Looking back, it seems like a pretty proposal. Even though I made her pay to break Drew, it would... Mm be strange if she was trying to live with her to save. My mother-in-law, however, did not share such a suspicion. Thank you. She said, oh, but she didn't seem very enthusiastic about living together. The only thanks you can give me is my cute grandchild properly. Money is not the only thing you can back with. I know you're kind enough to offer help, but where I live is too expensive to consider my grandchild's future, so it's okay to continue as we are. My mother-in-law left with those words. Since then, I've been living comfortably in a house that felt like a lie, but I still can't stop thinking about my mother-in-law. Certainly, I understand that raising my son well would be a way to repay my mother-in-law's kindness. After all, breaking up with Drew was the sake of our son. 
But at that moment, I was thinking about something else I could do. Suddenly, I heard the words video while watching TV. This is it. My mother-in-law cares deeply about my son, and I want to show her his progress from now on. So, decided to buy a computer as enable video calls with my mother own. I was able to give the gift to my mother-in-law faster than I had expected. Even though my work hours didn't change with Drew gone, it became much easier to save money. I visited my mother-in-law's house and used her computer and internet. At first, my mother-in-law tried to say that she didn't want me to go through the trouble. Because raising my son well is my way of repaying you, right? If that's the case, it's strange that you can't see my grandson, isn't it? Even my mother-in-law couldn't resist the desire to see her grandchild. So I forcefully convinced my mother. As proof of this, my mother-in-law, with slightly impaired hearing, was able to use headphones and adjust the volume during calls, making it easier for her to hear. Since then, I have been video calling my mother-in-law several times a month. I feel like we've grown closer than ever before. One day, my mother-in-law told me that she had been forgetting things more often. Although my mother-in-law was still healthy, she was of a certain age. It wouldn't be strange to have some medical issues. I told her that it's better not to talk too much about it, but the situation seems more serious than I thought. According to my mother-in-law, she forgets what she spends money on, miscalculates, and frequently loses track of where she puts accessories. Our homes are quite far apart, so it's difficult for me to check with her time. Still, I thought about how I could help her and suggested that she could send messages as a memo when she takes off accessories so that I could see them. My mother-in-law was initially hesitant, thinking it would be too much trouble. But over the past few months, I have been able to persuade her to overcome her reluctance. You don't have to worry about that. I convinced my mother-in-law and she eventually accepted my proposal. My mother-in-law herself was also a WC, so she would forget even more serious things in the future. Perhaps I became a little too anxious it's only natural for me to want to help her. It may be presumptuous of me, but I do this. My mother-in-law won't rely on me for anything. However, to be honest, this method really solved the problem. Although the frequency of her forging has decreased, she still struggled with making enough money to support herself and losing valuable equipment. I wonder if I've even forgotten to you with the notes. What should I do? If this goes on, even lose important things like bank and credit cards. She doesn't have the reliable appeal. She helped me to separate Drew and being overwhelmed with anxiety. Let's go to the hospital together, shall we? There should be treatment for memory now, right? That's about all I can do. If my mother-in-law is starting to show signs of dementia or something, mm. I want to take care of her until the end. I'm prepared for that. My mother-in-law seemed to understand my seriousness and thanked me, asking me, thank you. Well then, shall we wrap up today's video call? Then she made a motion to end the call, taking out her earphones. However, it seems she made a mistake operation as her house continued to visible on my computer screen. I could have just turned off the caption which would have solved the problem, but to be honest, I was a little curious about what kind of life my mother had led. Her house is an old mansion located isolated place with hardly any other around. Since my mother-in-law lives alone, she leaves the front door and the doors inside wide open. Therefore, even the camera on my con show a glimpse of the rooms in the, as I was Thinking about how large this was out of curiosity, I saw something else besides my mother-in-law. At first, thought it might be due internet environment causing the sea distorted, but it was definitely a shadow. 
That shadow was moving from room to room, trying not to be noticed by my mother. And then I realized it was my ex-husband, Drew. He was rummaging through the dresser, stuffing my mother-in-law's accessories and money into his pockets. I was shocked, but I knew I couldn't go on. So I shouted to my mother, What? What's going on? But it wasn't just the mother-in-law who heard my voice. Drew also shouted, Damn it, they found out. The mother-in-law turned around and glared at Drew. You jerk! Don't you have no sex decency? While she shouted, she chased after. I couldn't just stand there and do so. I called 911 and explained the S. They dispatched police officers to... As a result, Drew was caught by the officer and taken into custody. During questioning, a part of the mother-in-law's accessory was found. We were able to prove that Drew had those items from the mother-in-law by looking at the message history between her and me. Drew's confession to the police revealed that he had stolen money and accessories from his mother-in-law's house on multiple occasions. The reason for the crime was that he was constantly nagged for money. It turned out that the boyfriend of the woman who had been impregnated by Drew was a gangster member. When he found out about the abortion, he suffered greatly. He was also constantly asked for more than for consolation money. Mm. And the amount he received from his mother disappeared quickly. He had not come to my house because of a contract and he thought I did not have any money. As a result of Drew's arrest, several other gang members were also arrested. After some time, Drew was sentenced to prison. I visited him with my mother-in-law. Hey mom, please forgive me. I was pressured into it. Can't we withdraw the criminal comp now? Huh? Please. This is dangerous here. It's a mistake. Even the gangster henchmen are incarcerated here. I don't know what they will do to me. Please. I'm your son, and you're my right. You can't abandon me like this, can't. Upon hearing Drew's insincere words, his mother sighed deeply. You are the result of the pain I went through giving birth, and you're still causing me all this pain. Everything, it's all your fault. So if you understand, then quietly reflect on your actions in prison. After saying this, she asked me to visitation room and went out. As a follow-up, I had my mother in undergo a memory test at the hospital's neurology department. The result was a temporary memory, L, by stress. Since Drew's arrest, there were no incidents of stolen money or lost accessories, and the forgetfulness subsided. I still regularly have video calls with my mother-in-law. If I hadn't broken up with Drew, at my son, might have become the son one criminal. I am sincerely grateful to my mother-in-law for preventing that possibility. I will repay her kindness by loving and raising my son well. I made that promise in my heart where my son's sleeping face lay.